1930, the Route 1 extension was mostly completed, with the exception of a new roadway that would have to cut across both rivers and the South Kearney Peninsula. A twin-tube tunnel under the rivers was considered, but deemed too costly. In 1925, the New Jersey Highway Commission applied for permits from the Department of War to construct two bridges with a clearance of 35 feet over the rivers. Initially, the permits were denied due to conflicts with marine interests on the waterways. Several collisions with low-lying bridges on the Lincoln Highway caused marine operators to balk at more movable bridges. The government also objected, claiming warships wouldn't be able to pass under bridges only 35 to 40 feet above the rivers. Consequently, the state decided to construct two bridges with a clearance of 135 feet. The War Department agreed to grant New Jersey the permits to build the bridges, but with one additional stipulation. The state would have to replace the two old bridges over the rivers on the adjacent Lincoln Highway. Planners initially recoiled at the demand, but after four years of squabbling, they eventually acquiesced and work began on the high-level viaduct in 1929. Contentions between labor unions and Jersey City caused a five-day work stoppage on the crossing. Jersey City Mayor Frank Haig employed non-unionized steel workers to construct the viaduct, much to the dismay of local union boss Theodore Brandle. On one occasion, Brandle's agitated laborers attacked the non-unionized workers, resulting in the death of one man. Mayor Haig ordered the Jersey City Police to wage relentless war against the Brandle rioters. Haig's police thwarted any future interference from the unionized steel workers. The Pulaski Skyway was designed by Danish engineer Sigvald Johannesson. Johannesson had previously worked on the London Underground and the Pennsylvania Railroad's New York Extension. Johannesson was tasked with designing the bridges and viaducts along the Route 1 extension. The Pulaski Skyway was designed as a bypass of the Lincoln Highway, today Truck 1 and 9. Vehicles falling off the elevated highway was a concern during the design phase. Guardrails on the viaduct were built five and a half feet above the roadway so that motorists could not see the meadow from the roadway. Steel balusters were spaced six inches apart to appear solid to a driver traveling at a high rate of speed. Curbs were raised to 16 inches above the road surface, making it difficult for drivers to mount the curb. Storm drains were purposely hidden, so motorists would not swerve to avoid puddles. The guardrails were fastened to the girders to create a strong barrier. Sodium vapor street lights, which were in their infancy at the time, illuminated the roadway for additional safety. The elimination of grade crossings forced planners to construct ramps 
between local streets and the elevated portions of the Route 1 extension. Lacking any pre-existing highway standards, engineers inadvertently placed the ramp portals at the center of the pioneering highway. Two long ramps rise from the surface streets of Kearney and Jersey City to the elevated highway. Politicians and manufacturers were anxious to reclaim the mosquito-infested lands between Newark and Jersey City and transform it into an industrial area. The westernmost ramp descends from the Skyway to Central Avenue in Kearney. A second two-way ramp was constructed, slightly north of the Hackensack River, near present-day Truck 1 and 9, by Broadway in Jersey City. At a steep grade of 5.5%, trucks had difficulties merging safely from the ramps onto the viaduct. In 1934, just two years after opening, Jersey City reacted to the road hazard, but we'll get to that later. The final link in the Route 1 extension opened to traffic on November 24, 1932. Less than a year after the viaduct opened, the state of New Jersey proposed a 10-cent toll for passenger vehicles and a 20-cent toll for trucks. Fears of vehicles reverting back to the Lincoln Highway to avoid the toll-forced planners to reverse course. During planning and construction, and the first half year of operation, the viaduct had no official name. The elevated highway was referred to as Diagonal Highway, High Level Viaduct, and Newark Jersey City Viaduct. On October 11, 1933, the viaduct was officially renamed General Pulaski Skyway. Kazimierz Pulaski was a military commander of Polish origin 
who traveled to North America to advise the Continental Army during the Revolutionary War. Lack of acceleration in deceleration lanes, a center breakdown lane, lack of a center barrier or lane stripings, and a smooth, flat road surface that permitted high-speed travel contributed to an excessive number of crashes. In response, Jersey City banned trucks from the Pulaski Skyway in 1934. Truckers appealed to the Supreme Court arguing, the actions of the city authorities was unconstitutional and an unreasonable restraint of interstate travel. In the end, the Supreme Court sided with Jersey City in the interest of public safety and the ban was upheld. By the mid-1950s, a center barrier was erected and the road was resurfaced with a coarser pavement for better traction. The collapse of the I-35 bridge in 2007 raised concerns about the durability of the Pulaski Skyway. In 2014, the state of New Jersey embarked on a long-term rehabilitation of the mammoth steel structure. Initially, the state of New Jersey set aside $200 million for the improvements. As work began, engineers discovered the Skyway was in much worse shape than they originally thought. With costs hovering around a billion dollars, Work on the Pulaski Skyway continues to this day. With repairs ongoing, it is estimated the lifespan of the Pulaski Skyway has been extended until the year 2095. The Pulaski Skyway stands today as a reflection of the dreams and aspirations of a once industrious and developing nation. With local municipalities choking on traffic, the state of New Jersey responded with a groundbreaking infrastructure project that not only benefited the economy, but improved the lives of its citizens. 